Hi, this is Aaron at ThinkBotLabs.com and welcome back. It's about time we start adding audio to our game, so let's get started. Game audio is a huge subject. There are so many things that you can do with audio, I doubt it, it could ever be covered in one setting. In the most basic of setups, you have one audio listener, which is typically attached to the camera in your scene. Right here. And this is where all of your sounds are outputted to. Also, on your game components, for example, on your on our boxes, you would have an audio source attached to that game object where you could add an audio clip and then tell that clip to play based on an event um, that that game object has been triggered. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a script that you can attach all of your audio clips to and then simply pass them a parameter um, to other game objects that can call on them to be played. So I went ahead and downloaded three audio clips and I grabbed them from freesound.org. Uh, freesound.org has hundreds of thousands of clips that are all royalty free. So have at it. Download as many as you need for your, uh, for your game. And then let's go ahead and create that script. Let's go ahead and go to scripts and create a new script. And we'll call this audio manager. And then we're going to attach it to the game manager. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. All right, we'll delete all this out of here. So for our audio manager, what we need to create first is a custom class that we can use to um, manipulate the audio source before we um, continue to play it. And what I mean is, is in our audio source, we have all these variables that we can um, adjust and modify. We want to be able to modify those um, variables in code and set all that up for us in the script before we ever play it. So let's go ahead and remove this, go back to our script, and we need to create that custom class. And we'll call this class public class sounds, or just sound, singular. And we will need this um, sound class to be serialized, so system.serializable. And we have to add the system on there because we're not deriving from mono behavior. So um, what we need first is our audio source, so private audio source, and we'll just call this source. And then we need the name of the clip that we're going to use. So public string clip name. And then we need that clip, of course. Public audio clip. And then clip. We need the volume. So public float volume. And we need the pitch. And we'll do two more. You can add as many as you want in here. Um, like we saw just a few minutes ago, there um, the audio source is a huge component, so there's a lot to adjust there. Um, so public bool loop. If we want to loop the um, audio track, we're going to set this to false by default. And then public bool play on awake equals false as well. All right, so those are the variables that we'll be affecting. So let's go ahead and set up that audio source. So public void set source. This is going to be for our audio source. And we'll call this source. And so let's go ahead and set the sources audio source to all of our variables. So the source equals underscore source. The source clip is equal to clip. Source pitch is equal to pitch. Source volume is equal to volume. The source play on awake is equal to play on awake. And finally, our source loop is equal to loop. All 
All right. Last thing we need to do in this class is we need to um, call play. So public void play. And we'll tell our custom source to play. All right, that's it for that. Let's go into our audio manager. And in our audio manager, we need to create a singleton. So public static audio manager instance. We're going to create a singleton for the auto manager so we can go ahead and call it in other scripts. The other variable we need in here is we need the sounds uh, variable. We'll create a, an array of that. So sounds array sound. And this is going to have to be serialized so we can see it in the inspector. And then on awake. We need to see if this audio manager instance um, is already in the scene. And if not, we need to go ahead and place it there. So if the instance is equal to null, we'll say that the instance is equal to this. And then else if the instance does not equal to this, we're going to destroy that game object. All right. So in our start, as soon as the um, audio manager script is fired up, we'll say void start. So what we need to do is we need to loop through the entire sounds array. So for sounds.length, and then while we loop through every sound object, we're going to go ahead and create a new game object. So game object, and we'll call this go, is equal to new game object, and we'll give it a name of sound underscore plus i, which is going to tell us what number it is, plus underscore, and then plus the sounds i dot clip name and also for organization we're going to parent all these um, new game objects underneath the game manager so uh, go dot transform dot set parent this dot transform and then finally for each of our new game objects that we create we need to add an audio source to it and use our custom set source um, from our sound class so sounds i dot set source for our game object add component audio source missing a print there and the last thing we need to do is we need to create a method to play our um, clip sounds so public void play sound and we're going to simply just pass it a name um, of our clip so string name so again to play the sound we need to loop through the entire um, sound array so for sound dot length and we'll continue to loop through the array until we find the clip name. So if sound dot i dot clip name is equal to the name that we're passing into the play sound method. And then once we find that clip, we're going to simply play it. So 
sound dot i dot play and then once we play the sound we're just going to um, break out of this loop all right that should be all we need to do for the audio manager so let's go ahead and save it and go back to our scene All right, so now the audio manager, we see we have the sounds array. And we start out, it's zero. So let's add a clip. We have a new element. So for our first audio clip, let's use our action theme. Let's go ahead and grab it and drag it into the clip. And we'll name this action theme. We'll set our volume at one and our pitch at one. All right, so now we need a way to play this. So let's go back to our script and in our audio manager start, let's go ahead and call play sound. And we need to call action theme. Go ahead and save that. All right, so let's go ahead and play that and check it out. All right, so now we see that under the game manager, we have a new object created. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. We have a new object created, and it's named after our um, string that we passed to it. And our pitch and our volume are both being passed in correctly. Great. So let's go ahead and hook up the bandsaw and the trigger as well. So let's go to our scripts, our switch, and then our switch, let's see. The only thing we need to do in here is we need to grab a reference to the audio manager. So audio manager, audio manager, and then in start, we need to say that audio manager is equal to, not the big one, the small one, audio manager is equal to audio manager dot instance and then whatever our trigger is is a great place to go ahead and call this so when we collide with this trigger we're going to go ahead and play the sound and we'll say um, audio manager small one dot play sound and we'll call this um, switch sound okay let's go ahead and copy this out right here and that should be all that we need to do to the switch to be able to play that sound so let's go back to our game manager after this compiles and then we're going to add a second one okay and then we're going to change the name to switch sound and for our audio we're going to grab the trigger and drop it in there. Let's go ahead and do something real quick. Instead of having these floats to fill out under the, the volume and the pitch, let's add some ranges so it'll give us a slider. So let's go to the audio manager. Under our volume, let's add a range. That range is going to be from 0, which is off, to 1. And then for our pitch, our range is going to be from 0 to 3, which is all the way up for our pitch. Let's go ahead and save that, go back to our scene, and we should see these change. Cool, so we have some nice sliders. So for our action theme, let's go ahead and turn this way down um, so we can just focus on our switch sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and play that and check out our switch sound. Cool. So you can see we have two game objects created. Our action themes volume is set all the way down. And our switch sound. Let's go ahead and hop over to our switch. Then when we collide with it, it should make our switch trigger sound. Perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and stop that. And we'll set up one more, one for our bandsaw. So let's go to our scripts, 
for a saw, and we'll do the same thing that we did with the switch. We need to grab a reference to the audio manager. Call this audio manager. And then in start, and you see that audio manager is equal to audio manager dot instance. And then we're just going to say the audio manager dot play sound and we'll call this saw sound. Let's copy this out. Go ahead and save that. We'll go back to our audio manager. Add a new one, so three. Rename the clip to our saw sound. Go to our audio and grab the band saw. All right, and let's play that. All right, so now we can hear saw playing. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing I want to show off is how we can add a audio mixer group and associate that um, with one of our clips. And I'll show you what I mean. So in audio, right click, create, and say audio mixer. And we'll simply call this audio mixer. So the audio mixer, you can double click on it. So with the audio mixer, we can actually pass our audio through the audio mixer and then finally it'll come out of our audio listener. And so with the audio mixer, we have a lot more granular control over what we can do with the sound before we finally pass it out. With the audio manager script, we can get very um, detailed on what those individual clip items do, but we can also set those clips to be a part of a wider group that we can again manipulate. So let's in the audio mixer, we have our master um, volume. Let's go ahead and create two groups underneath the master. And we will unparent these and set them side by side. We'll rename the first group to SFX for all of our sound effects. And we'll rename the second group to our music. Now, in order to associate one of our audio clips with one of these um, mixer groups, we need to add that in our audio manager. So under the sounds, we need to add another private. But before that we do that, we need to add using Unity Engine dot audio. That way we have access to this audio mixer. Then we need to set up a variable um, for our audio mixer, so um, public audio mixer group, and we'll call this audio mixer group, and then in the set source, remember these are all the parameters we're setting up for our source, we'll say source dot output audio mixer group is equal to our audio mixer group. Okay. So the output audio mixer group is going to be equal to our audio mixer group. Go ahead and save that and go back to our audio manager. Within all of our elements, we have a new um, audio mixer group. So what we can do is we can grab the selector. So for our action theme, we want to grab the music. For our switch sound, it's going to be a sound effects. And then for our saw sound, it's also going to be a sound effects. All right, and let's set the um, action theme to loop, and we'll do the same thing with our saw sound. Let's go ahead and play that. All right, so now we have three um, sound objects created. Let's go to our audio mixer. And if you click edit and play mode, we can turn down the music. Turn it up. Turn the sound effects up. We can turn it down. Then we turn the master for all of them up and down. We can do this because our music and our sound effects are both being fed through to the master and their master is being fed out to the audio listener. So within each of these um, sound 
groups, we can again adjust the pitch and we can adjust the overall volume. So we can have numerous sound effects all added to this one group and then we can dynamically change all that. So this is extremely beneficial. Um, also with the sound groups, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, with the add, you can add high passes, low passes, um, reverbs. So there's a ton of options you can do. Um, for now, we're just going to leave it at this. And in one of the upcoming videos, we're going to go ahead and expose these parameters for the master sound effects and music. That way we can manipulate those volumes um, within the GUI. We'll create a new uh, GUI pop-up uh, for our audio options um, that we can adjust. Well, I hope this was helpful, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and we'll see you in the next one. Till then.